Hello and welcome to a lesson on fractions in their simplest form, where we'll also talk about equivalent fractions and how to get them into simplest form. So let's start by talking about equivalent fractions and what the word equivalent means. So equivalent generally means you're going to be looking at things that have the same value but they look different. So they look a little different but they have the same value. Um, for instance, you may have some background knowledge on like percents um, and the decimals that they represent, which we'll talk more about later too. But um, even though you have a percentage that represents a decimal amount or a fractional amount, um, they look different, but they they represent the same thing. Okay, or um, let's say for instance, you know, you're you're looking at measuring something and it's three feet in length. You could also say that it's one yard in length. So the three feet and one yard are different units of measurement, but they represent the same thing. So they are equivalent. Three feet is equivalent to one yard. Okay. Um, so that's the concept. And when we're looking at fractions that are equivalent, that means that these fractions represent the same portion of a whole. And again, th that is what's going to make them equivalent fractions. And for instance, I have a picture here where we have one whole, but it's divided into different amounts. So in this first picture, we can see one of the two boxes is shaded. So this picture represents a fraction of one half. In the second box, it's still the same whole, but because it's broken into four equal parts, now two of the four are shaded. And then the third one, again, it's the same whole, but it's broken into 16 parts and eight of them are shaded. But also notice that the shaded region is the same amount in all of them. So we have the same portion. This amount is the same as this amount, and it's the same as this amount in all three of those. So when you're uh, looking at the same portion uh, of a whole, then your fractions are equivalent. So these if these three fractions are all equivalent. They look different, but they have equal values. They have the same value. And a couple ways, um, if you weren't looking at a picture to determine if you had equivalent fractions is by actually dividing them. That's what a fraction means, right? If you took the one and divided it by two, we can use our calculator to do this if we wanted, right? What is one divided by two? Well, that's gonna be 0.5. So if I actually did the division, 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. If I did that with 2 fourths, 2 divided by 4 is still going to be, oops, 2, I can't write here, 2 divided by 4 is still going to be 0 0.5. And again, if I did 8 and divided it by 16, we're still going to get 0 0.5. So one way to confirm that you do have equivalent fractions is to actually divide them. Divide your numerator by your denominator. You're going to see that your fractions end up being equivalent amounts. Um, so if we didn't have the picture to show us, this was one way to confirm. Another way is by finding what we call cross products. So for instance, if I was comparing the one half and the two fourths and I was trying to decide are these equal, one way I could determine that is by finding the cross products. So if I multiplied across diagonally here, Oops, I wanted to change colors. Okay, here, two times two gets me four. If I cross multiply here, one times four gets me four. If those, the, the fours that I have there, those represent the cross products. If those numbers are equal, that's another way to determine that our fractions are equal. They are equivalent. They look different, right? A half looks different than two fourths, but they actually represent the same portion of the whole. So they are the same. Or let's say I wanted to compare uh, two-fourths with eight-sixteenths. If I wanted to say, hey, are these two fractions equal? I can find the cross products. So eight times four would be 32, and two times 16 would be 32. Well, if those two are the same, then those two fractions are equivalent, okay? So equivalent fractions divide to make the same uh, decimal amount. They make the same decimal amount and their cross products, their cross products, that's what I showed you in pink there, are going to be equal as well. Okay, so just kind of some helpful things. Now, um, there are many um, 
many, many, many equivalent fractions out there for the, the one half that we just looked at. I can go on actually infinitely um, and give you equivalent fractions, but really the goal for today is to be able to get a fraction into its simplest form. So what does it mean for a fraction to be in its simplest form? So a fraction is written in its simplest form, which we could also call lowest terms. So lowest terms and simplest forms, those are sort of interchangeable. Um, a fraction's in this simplest form or in its lowest terms when the numerator and the denominator have no common factors. No common factors other than one, since one is going to be a factor of every number. So for instance, if we're looking at the fraction 1 half, that is a fraction in simplest form. This one is in simplest form because the only number that goes into both 1 and 2 is 1. It's the only factor they have in common. So this is in simplest form, so they have no common factors other than 1. Okay, but if we're looking at 2 fourths, this is not in simplest form. Not in simplest form because the 2 and 4 have a common factor other than 1. If you'll notice, uh, 2 can be divided by 2 and 4 can be divided by 2 as well. And if they have a factor in common that's not 1, then your fraction is not in simplest form. So they have a common factor of 2. Remember, a factor divides evenly into our number. Common factor of 2. Okay, so if there's any common factor other than 1, your fraction is not in simplest form. So the process that we're going to be looking at is in making a fraction um, so that it's in its simplest form is called simplifying. So we're going to be simplifying fractions into their simplest form. Um, we can also call it reducing. Reducing our fraction to its lowest terms. Okay, now there's just a couple of properties that are going to be useful in this process of simplifying or reducing. First, uh, any non-zero number divided by itself is going to be 1. This is a property we've talked about before. For instance, if you took 17 and divided it by 17, that's going to be 1. Or you took 5 and divided it by 5, that's going to be 1. Any number divided by itself is going to be 1, except for 0 because 0 in the bottom of the fraction, as we've discussed, is not defined. Okay. Also, the product of any number and 1 is itself. If I take any number and multiply it by 1, I am not changing the value of the number. So like 8 times 1 is still going to be 8. Or 24 times 1 is still going to be 24. Okay, and there's a third property here that we're going to be studying more later when we talk about multiplying fractions. But for now, and I'll show you how this works in just a minute, if we have a factorization in our numerator and a factorization in our denominator, we can actually split this into two separate fractions. So if we split this into two separate fractions where the first number in our two number factorization becomes our first fraction, and then the second number in our two number factorization becomes the second fraction. So that's going to be a useful property. And if you didn't, if you're like looking at that going, well, how do we know? Um, let's think about just a, let's pick a normal fraction. Like, let's say we're looking at, how about 6 over 10, for instance, okay? If I took the fraction 6 over 10, let's say I split 6 into a two number factorization like 2 times 3. And I split 10 into a two number factorization like 2 times 5. Well, I know that 2 times 3 is the same as 6, so I'm okay with that change. I also know that 2 times 5 is 10, so I'm okay with that change. Okay, so so far I haven't done anything but rewrite this fraction. Now if I split this, like the property says here, into 2 over 2, and I multiply it by 3 over 5 into two separate fractions, have I changed what I'm dealing with here? Well, let's just confirm. Okay, let me put this into the calculator. If I have 2 over 2, and I multiply that by 3 over 5, well then I have, let me get my 
the, my fraction to decimal, but I have 3 fifths there. So this ends up being 3 fifths. And that's because this part becomes a 1, right? 2, two over 2 is 1. But even if we didn't see that, what we're saying is now all these equal signs, right? I'm saying based on these properties are true, that 3 over 5 really should be equal to 6 over 10. So I want to put 6 over 10 in here and see if in fact it does end up being 3 over 5, and it is. So those are in fact equivalent, okay? So I don't want you to get too hung up on that just yet. Just kind of trust me on that property. We're going to study that some more in a bit, but it will come back and be helpful, okay? And um, the process that I just showed you briefly there is basically what we're going to be doing to try to simplify our fractions. We want to identify common factors for our numerator and denominator and rewrite that numerator and denominator as factorizations using those common factors. So we know if a, you know if if a six has a factor of two, then I could rewrite it as a factorization of two times three. Okay, for instance, like I just showed you, and that's a tiny blank for that word, sorry. And then we're going to separate the factorizations into two separate fractions using that, that kind of new property there. And then the fractions with equal numerators and denominators end up becoming 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. And once we've done this to the fullest, we should end up with our fraction in simplified form. So we just need to make sure that whatever fraction we're left with has no more common factors. And if we get stuck at all in this process, which it happens, um, try finding the prime factorizations. Remember the process of using a factor tree to break our numbers down. And then if all else fails, right, verify what you're doing with the calculator. Verify with the calculator. I should have put that in here as a step. And calculator, or in our case, the lovely and free Desmos. Okay? So let's try this out. Let's try and get 12 over 20 into its simplest form. Now I know by looking at this it's not in simplest form because 12 and 20 are both even numbers, so they have at least a common factor of 2. Can you see a bigger common factor though? Can you think of some numbers that go into both 12 and 20? So I know 2 goes in, but if we can think of a bigger number that's going to be a little more um, helpful for us, although 2 is going to work as well. Um, but 4, for instance, is a bigger number, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the top of my fraction as a factorization using 4. 4 goes into 12 3 times, so I'm going to make 12 um, a product of 4 times 3. And then 4 goes into 25 times, so I'm going to make uh, 20 a product of 4 times 5. And now I can separate this into two separate fractions. So I can make this 4 over 4 times 3 over 5. And what's nice is 4 over 4 becomes a 1. So this is really 1 times 3 over 5, but multiplying any number by 1 doesn't change its value. And so really we're just looking at 3 fifths. Now the 3 and the 5 have no more common factors, which means 3 fifths is the simplified form, the simplest form of 12 over 20. So we could also say that 12 over 20 reduces to 3 fifths. And just so you can see again that um, Desmos will do this for you, if you put in 12 over 20, it gives you a decimal, but you can hit your in the blue here the little button that looks like a fraction and it will tell you that 12 over 20 is in fact 3 fifths. Okay, so this is a skill you should have but the, the calculator will do this for you too. Okay, so 3 fifths. And the other thing we can do is divide them both, right? So we saw 12 over 20 ends up being 0.6. If we divide 3 by 5 we get the same decimal amount so I know that those are equivalent. Alright, so I just want to show you too Let's say you had seen the 12 and 20 uh, the common, having a common factor of 2. So 2 goes into 12 6 times, 
and then 2 goes into 20 uh, 10 times. So if you had used that and said, well, that's going to be 2 over 2 times 6 over 10, and that becomes 1 times 6 over 10, which is 6 over 10. It's really the same process, but notice that the 6 and 10 still have a common factor, so we'd have to do this again. The 6 would become 2 times 3, and the 10 would become 2 times 5, and then we'd have 2 over 2, and 3 over 5, and that would become a 1, and then we'd finally get down to our 3 fifths. So if we, the bigger the common factor we can find, the less simplifying we have to do. All right, so let me just get rid of this mess. But the 2 would have worked for us as well. OK, so let's try another one. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. All right, so let's look at 42 and 66, looking for a common factor. So again, these are both even, so I know that 2 goes in, so I could start there if I was absolutely stuck. But hopefully you can see a bigger number that goes into both of these. For instance, I can see that 6 is going to go into both. So I can make the top 6 times 7. 6 times 7 is 42. And I can make the bottom 6 times 11. 6 times 11 makes 66, which is nice because when we separate this again, the 6 over 6 becomes a 1. And anything multiplied by 1 is itself. And so we have 7 elevenths. And 7 and 11 have no more common factors, which means it's going to represent the simplest form of my fraction. And again, let's just use our technology. We put in 42 over 66 and hit our fraction button. It's going to show us the reduced or simpli simplified form. The simplest form is 7 over 11. Or again, divide 42 by 66, you get that decimal. And divide 7 by 11, and you get that same decimal. OK, so we've got 2 down. Let's try again here. 10 over 27. 10 over 27. Well, let's see. If we were stuck, because I'm not seeing any common factors here, we could always try to rely on our prime factorization. So let's think about 10. If we were making a factor tree here. 2 is going to go in 5 times. And those are prime, so that's it. And if we were looking at 27, 27 is 3 times 9, and the 9 could break down to 3 times 3. Well, the 2 and the 5 that are here, and the 3's that are here, there, there's no common factors in this uh, group at all. So if we have no common factors, that means our fraction is in its simplified form. So the simplified form for 10 over 27 is 10 over 27. There are no common factors. OK, no common factors other than 1. So again, sometimes we're already going to be in our simplest form. OK, all right, how about this one? 30 and 108. Goodness. Um, so I know 3 is going to go in. I know 3 goes into 30. And remember, if we add up these digits, we get 9. Since that divides by 3, I know 108 will divide by 3. It's not a very big number. So I'm going to use my, my prime factorization again, just to make sure I've captured everything I can, so I don't have to stretch the process out too far. So I'm going to take 30 and break that down using a factor tree. So I know 3 goes in 10 times and then 10 becomes 2 times 5. So my prime factors are going to be 3, 2, and 5. So I'm going to make the top of my fraction here uh, 2 times 3 times 5. And then on the bottom, let me do this again, uh, 108. Let's see, 108, um, I said 3 was going to go in. 3 is going to go in. 39 times, and then 3 is going to go into that uh, 13 times, and then those are all prime, so 3, 3, and 13 are going to be the prime factors for the denominator. So 3 and 3 and 13. And so what we're looking at here is only one that we're going to be able to um, reduce out there. So if I reorder this, let's see, 2 thirds, I actually leave it in order, 2 over 3, 3 over 3, 5 over 13, okay, means I'm going to have 2 over 3, uh, sorry, 2 over 3, 3 over 3 becomes 1, and 5 over 13, and all together, what's that going to give us? Well, let's put these back on the, let me, uh, 
Let me go back here. So I said not to reorder this, but I want to reorder this. I don't like this here. So what I want to do is, let me go back, actually, back up all kinds of backup. So this is the only fraction that's going to be able to go away. That's the only one that's going to become a 1. So I think that's the only one that I want to take out here. So I'm going to move the 3 over 3, but I'm going to leave the 2 and the 5 and the 3 and the 13 because they're not going to make any 1s for me. So I'm just going to separate this way. That way I can see exactly what I'm looking at here. The 3 over 3 becomes a 1, and this means I still have a 10 and a 39 here. So 10 39ths is going to be the simplest form of this fraction. And again, fortunately for us, we have technology that can verify. So if we put in 30 over 108, we can see our simplified form is what 5 over 18. What did I do? Mm. Not seeing it. Not seeing it, people. Three goes in. Oh my, I can't divide. Holy cow. Right here. Goodness gracious. It's right there. <laughs> This is why it's good to verify our work, and I, this is not the first time I've made a mistake, so... Alright, let me just start all over. Guys, sorry. This is what happens when you do this stuff late on a <laughs> on a late night. Um, okay, let me try this again. So, I can't divide. I mean, I can, but I made a mistake here. So, I said 3 was going to go in, but I said 39 times, and in fact, 108 divided by 3 is 36 and not 39. <laughs> so this is a 36 here. I'm so sorry. And uh, then 36 we could break down. Let's see, that's 6 times 6, and that's going to become a 2 times 3, and then that's going to become a 2 times 3. So then these are all of my prime factors. All right, let's try this again. So the top of my fraction was fine. It was 2 times 3 times 5. The bottom now, we've got all kinds of stuff. We got two twos, and then we have one, two, three threes, and yes, I don't want to goof this up again. So what I have are two fractions that I can try to separate here. So I can bring out this guy right here, and maybe that pair right here as well. So if I take out the two over two and the three over three, what's left? Well, on the top, I can see I'm just going to have a 5 there. On the bottom, a 2, a 3, and a 3. And so that means I'm looking at 1 times 1 times 5 over 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. And so our simplified form is 5 eighteenths, which is what the calculator just told me, so I knew I made a mistake. Goodness, so there it is. 30 over 108 reduces down to 5 eighteenths, okay? So we're human, right? We all make mistakes. Maybe you're not expecting your <laughs> teacher to do that. I'm so sorry. Um, I promise I know how to divide. But I am used to using some shortcuts, and so let me tell you about these shortcuts. Sometimes my brain has a harder time when I slow this down. Uh, but instead of separating the fractions and making the ones, we can simply reduce them. So instead of separating us, this all out, we can simply reduce. And let me show you with this one example here. So if I know that those twos and threes are gonna end up becoming ones, which don't, no longer affect my fraction because when we multiply by one, it doesn't change the value. What I might do here as a shortcut is just say, well, this is gonna reduce to one and this is gonna reduce to one and then go straight to my answer, which would be one times one times five on the top and one times two times one times three times three on the bottom, which would be the 18. So that's a shortcut that we could try and we will and that's something I quite like actually. And then another shortcut is um, instead of rewriting our numerator and denominators into factorizations, we can simply divide. We can literally just divide in order to simplify. So for example, with, um, where was it, with this one. So when we're looking at 12 over 20, if we see that we have a common factor of 
4, what we can do is just divide that out from the beginning. So when I'm looking at this, I could say, well, there's a common factor of 4. Let me divide my numerator and denominator by 4. So 12 divided by 4 would make my new numerator 3. And then 20 divided by 4 is going to make my new denominator 5. And there's my simplified form. So there's a couple shortcuts. If you don't like the shortcuts, don't use them. But they do tend to save you some time. But now you can see why we can use those shortcuts. OK? So I'm going to try using some shortcuts here. So looking at 72 and 26, for example, um, let's say we were going to break this into some factorizations like on the top here. I'm going to show you both shortcuts, OK? On the top, um, I can see both these numbers are divisible by 2. So maybe I make the top 2 times 36. And maybe I make the bottom 2 times 13. And now I can see I've got common factors of 2's that are going to become 1. So right here, I'm going to reduce these and say, sorry, reduce these and say, well, that's going to become a 1 and that's going to become a 1. So. My simplified form is going to be 1 times 36, which is 36, and 1 times 13, which is 13. And since 13 is a prime number, I know we're not going to have any other common factors. And that's going to be the simplified form of that fraction. And just because, oh, I make silly mistakes, let me just double check. 72 over 26 reduces down to 36 over 13. OK? So let's try that first shortcut once more. So let's see, on the top and the bottom, I can see that 6 is going to go into both of these numbers. And so I wouldn't actually have to rewrite the, the numerator. I'm going to leave that as 6. But I'm going to make my denominator a factorization of 6 times 10. And so what happens here is, again, these reduce to 1's. Right? 6 divided by 6 becomes a 1. And so what's left on the top of my fraction is just that 1. And what's left on the bottom is 10. So the reduced form, the simplified form, is 1 tenth. And let's just verify that 6 over 60 is, again, going to be 1 tenth. OK? So there's the first shortcut. Now let's try the next one. So when I'm looking at 45 and 75, I'm definitely seeing that these are both divisible by 5. So if they have a common factor of 5, then I can reduce this, simplify this, by dividing both my numerator and denominator by that common factor of 5. So what happens? Well, 45 divided by 5 becomes 9. And then 75 divided by 5 is going to be, what, 15? One, yeah. Let me not goof this up again. 75 divided by 5 is 15. OK, so 9 over 15. Now, there was probably a larger factor that could have went in. And I can see that now because 9 and 15 still have a common factor. What goes into 9 and 15 happens to be 3. So let me reduce one more time by dividing both my numerator and denominator by 3. And that's going to give me 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. No more common factors means that should be my simplified form. OK, so let me confirm 45 over 75 reduces down to 3 fifths. OK, and um, if you want to see that the long, do you want? I don't. I'm not sure where you're at with this, but I can show you again the long way. 45. If we were to break that down, would be lots of different things here. But I could say 5 times 9, and that's 3 times 3. So the top of my fraction, I could look at that as 3 times 3 times 5, and then 75. Let's see. Could be 3 times 25 and 5 times 5. So the bottom would be 3 times 5 times 5. And so these would reduce to 1's. And we can have a pair of these that reduce to 1's. And what's left on the top is 1 times 3 times 1, which is 3. And 1 times 1 times 5, which is 5. So that way is going to work too. I think it's a little bit longer, but it's really whatever whatever is going to work for you. OK, and all of it can be confirmed with the calculator, so that's kind of nice too. And all right, I got one left here. If you are feeling confident, this would be a great place for you to pause the video and give this a try. And then come back and see how you did. So looking at 42 and 48, 
I know that 6 is going to go into both of these numbers, so I'm going to try to reduce this by dividing by 6 here and dividing by 6 on the bottom as well. So 42 divided by 6 is going to give me 7, and then 48 divided by 6 is going to give me 8, and oh, no, I wanted a different color. Sorry. 42 divided by 6 is 7. 48 divided by 6 is 8. 7 and 8 have no more common factors, which means 7 eighths is going to be my simplified form of my fraction. Okay? And again, if you wanted to do this the long way, this is two times, the, the, not the shortcut way, so the other way, uh, the long way. I hate to make it sound bad, but if you wanted to break all this down, this is 2 and 24, 2 and 12, 2 and 6, and 2 and 3, you would see on the top of your fraction 2, 3, and 7. You would see on the bottom of the fraction 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3, and then those are going to reduce to 1's, and a pair of those are going to reduce to 1's, and what are you left with? Uh, 7 on the top, and did I, what? What am I doing here again? Did I make another mistake? Oh yeah, that's a 2, not a 3. That's a 2 there. So that's going to reduce, and 2 times 2 times 2 is going to give me the 8 on the bottom. So you end up with the same thing. Um, I just transferred over here. So 4 2's and a 3, and 7 eighths. Okay, so all of this work creates more places for you to make mistakes, but if it's easier for you to organize and see it that way, um, you've got some options. Okay, so you got options for shortcuts, you got options for not taking shortcuts, and you have technology to verify all of your work. So hopefully it's enough for you to get going on that practice assignment. But as always, if you need some extra help, then just reach out. All right, guys, take care.